Hi, this is a demo of the schema.org blueprints module for Drupal in seven minutes. My name is Jacob Rockwitz. I want to make your life easier by solving complex problems with simple, well thought out solutions. You can find me at jrockwitz on the web. Um, the challenge that I feel the Drupal community is facing is we need to create, personalize, and distribute content that is consumable by multiple channels. The approach I want to take is to explore implementing a next generation content management system that supports progressive decoupling, structured data, advanced content authoring, and omni-channel publishing. And the content that I'm working with is schema.org, an open standard for defining structured data can be used as the, as the foundation for building a progressively decoupled Drupal website. In this demo, I'm gonna walk through schema.org, mappings, content authoring, JSON API, LD, and Next.js front end. I'm going to switch over to a clean install of Drupal that uses the Jin admin theme. I'm going to skip that and we're going to go over and we have the schema.org blueprints reports module which brings schema.org into Drupal and lets us browse it. And we can browse it in so much we can go any way to look at anything but we're just going to jump to event and just to illustrate you can click here and go right to schema.org and look at an event type but in Drupal you get the same information with additional references all configurable and it shows you the properties and the relationships at the bottom. It even shows you the default properties that you're going to get, what properties will be ignored. And now we want to start using this. So what we can do is go over to the content types. We have the default article and basic page, but we want to add a schema.org type. We click on add schema.org type and we can add a place. All of this is configurable that you see, but let's start with place. It's basically the intersection of a content type creation form and a field management form in one place. So we get place, descriptions would be pulled from schema.org automatically, that's a dedicated module. Our properties are automatically selected and mapped to field types. You can open this, this is the field edit form with reasonable names and defaults, you can adjust them. You can even click show unmapped and you can map additional fields like an alternate name or anything you'd want and you can filter. But for now, let's use the defaults and we're gonna just generate a place. And if we click manage fields, we get it. We also get a convention where we're using schema underscore instead of field, that's even configurable. Now we could keep going through and creating out all those content types, that could take a lot of time. Instead, what we're gonna do is say, okay, let's not use the quick start, but go over to configuration, search and meta, schema.org. You're gonna see what we just did. It's tracking that we've created a mapping of place in Drupal to place in schema. We have an API endpoint. We'll see that in a second. I'm gonna go over to mapping sets, also a dedicated module. Here we can say, I would like to set up common schema.org types. All of this is configurable. You can decide what your common ones are, even your industry specific ones. I'm gonna hit confirm, and then I'm gonna just open up person, and you'll see that all that information you saw on the form is here for you to review. It just helps you get started. It does all the mappings articles, it shows you that there's a lot of existing fields. It doesn't matter that it moved forward. Now what we want to do, I'm going to pull the drop down and say, we get this options now to create and create or kill content. That's a Drupalism or tear down, tear down types, which means we would just remove everything we just did. And we could view the details, which is what I just described to you. For now, we want to generate content but so that I can show you the content authoring experience. So what's happening is Devel is Devel generate installed. So it's generating content for us. If we go over to content, we're going to see some starter content just to see what's going on. And if I click on event, we get a very clean entity view mode that has grouping because we have field group turned on. All of this is configurable, the labels, the settings, the types, how it looks. The, it uses reasonable default, so we just get a nice entity reference link. To go a step further, we can go to the edit form which is really important for content authoring with decoupling is we get a clean edit form with just field groups. Of course, you could change this. You could decide how you want to alter it. It's to just help get you started with the right foundation. Event support subtyping. This is just a dedicated module, but the idea is you can add an extra little level of specificity to say this is a children's event, and that helps a lot with SEO. Down here, you get a nice CK editor, we've seen media browser. I'm just using drag and drop to show that it works, but you can also embed other entities inside this entity. And this actually will work with schema.org because it's a relationship and the schema.org blueprints module, just so an LD. 
supports embedding, understanding it. If you go down further, you'll just see the patterns that I just showed you where I'm just enhancing entity references. If you have the right modules installed and they're listed and documented, you can have a, a content browser, you can have inline editing. Right here, you can say, I wanna edit this node. I even went as far as to say, well, if you have the meta tag module installed in the schema.org blueprint spend tag, we'll add meta tags to every single content type. It's a common pattern. So the idea is to start accelerating things, making it easier. So from here, we have good content authoring. So what, what do we get with that? Well, the first thing at the bottom is we get just so an LD. We've got good structured data and what this data can is it's food for search engines. Search engines read this and they understand your content cleanly. It helps with your SEO, tons of stuff. If we go to address, it takes that address in Drupal and maps it perfectly to schema.org specification on how you would define an address. You even get validation tools where you can copy this. Now that we've got this great structured data, we just want to note that our APIs become a little more improved. Something I didn't show in the content authoring experience is that schema.org description is available in the node edit form, but then when you get to your API documentation, we go down here and we get our nice clean properties or fields, that also gets a documentation from schema. So we get duration, which is Latin text, that's fine. But you get end date, event status, subtype, start date. You don't get any Drupalisms exposed to your external users. It doesn't use field underscore or schema underscore. It just sets up clean APIs for you out of the box. Now with those clean APIs, you can build a decoupled front end. I wanna emphasize why I say progressively decoupled because I do include a view PDF in the demo to say, this is really powerful that Drupal can generate PDFs out of the box. You don't have to build a new system. So when you, I think progressive VT coupling is about taking different layers and moving it off into more progressive front ends like Next.js. And here's a preview of everything we saw up here, but rendered using Node.js and React, server side using Next.js with all their amazing optimizations available. And we get this nice clean component. To take it a step further, because we know we're dynamically generating content types, we could start generating components. So if we go to the Next.js component, this is just a tool for front-end devs to get quick templates, starter templates of React components. And I'm actually going over time, but I'll show you a little more and say, it's just a, it just takes the information above and exposes it to the end user. They can download, they can copy the component, there's even a drush command. I'm gonna keep going. I don't mind that I went a minute over and I'll live with it. Schema.org blueprints, it's a foundation. It's a, a way to build out your site. And I've done all this extra work to kind of point out that we're gonna have these layers that we add on top of this clean structured data where we get just own LD, clean APIs. And ultimately we get this Next.js decoupled front end. And we get this, we start building this great modern user experience. And the benefits that you're seeing, it's standardization. Schema.org is all about standardization. That leads to simplification. You don't have to think about naming things. You're using schema.org. You can even simplify the creation of your site architecture because there's patterns. Those patterns lead to a massive acceleration. In seven minutes, I've just shown you all the things that are capable, but just keep in mind, in one click, I generated an entire information architecture, and I want to reinforce it's completely configurable. I went over. The demo was seven minutes, but I want to say thanks for your time. You can find me at jrockquotes on the web. You can look at the project on drupal.org. It's projects.schema.org. I hope you enjoyed the video.